Hello, this is Comic Station issue number 36 for September 4th, 2013. I am Paul Nisi from Fun Toward Gamer. And I'm Scott Cates of the Comic Station. We have a large number of new releases and reviews to get over, so we're just going to go right into it. Jumping right into our new releases this week, we have a number of them, so we're going to try to make these a little shorter. So starting right off is Image Comics Reality Check. This is a new series. Basically, it goes over the story of a comic book creator who has had a number of problems in his life, especially revolving around his family and love life, and has since uh, created a comic book that has taken these personal experiences and translated them into his comic. He essentially created a looking for love in all the wrong places Batman kind of character. And you can really see the influences from his past shaping into the characters of this story. Where that comes in though is the comic within a comic section. Kind of overly hokey, kind of sets it apart from the group. It is an interesting storyline and I really like at the end the twist of it is, is he finally gets his comic book accepted by a smaller publisher and after doing the first issue he has a hard time thinking of the second one and you find out, and this isn't a spoiler because it's been in all the advertisements as much, but essentially he can't think anymore about the character because the character has left his imagination and come into the real world. Assume, assuming probably something to do with the fact that he kind of majorly screwed him over in the comic book. So it's an interesting storyline. Next. Big one. Big one. DC, main event, Forever Evil. Takes off where Trinity War left. Um, basically, it's the crime syndicate. They're back. They've been here before. Now they are back. They've managed to come through uh, using pretty much Pandora's box. And the gist of this is the Justice League, the Justice League of America, Justice League Dark, all seemingly dead. All the bad guys of the world are being brought under the crime syndicate's power, except for a twist at the end. And someone you may or may not expect is going to probably try to save the day. Um, so it's the, up to the bad guys to save the day, Up really. to the bad guys to save the day, one in particular. A little bit wordy for my taste, but it is a good story. Um, I like the Trinity War, so this follows up on it very nicely. Yep, and also noting individual comics going without the whole villains month is all everything. So Batman, Batman for example, issue number 23 has a 23.1 that goes over Joker. Other ones have... Groot and some of the other villain characters. So everyone's getting a little bit more background and insight into the villains yeah. this month. Now also, uh, just on a, a side note, uh, DC had an issue with their print runs. They underprinted. So uh, everything has been allocated to all your comic book stores. If there's a specific issue you want, you better go out and get it because uh, all, all stores have been shorted on their orders. So they are going fast. Especially the uh, stereoscopic uh, images where they change as you flip them back and forth. Really cool people are picking those up even if they're not really a big fan of it just because of the art. It's really cool to see that. Absolutely. So, all right, The next one we have is actually another return is again DC Comics Batman Black and White. This is kind of a volume four of this series because there has been three volumes in the past. Essentially Batman Black and White is a collection of mini stories uh, throughout the Batman series and each one having its own different artist and author so you get different styles especially in the artwork really stands out between these there's about a half a dozen in this volume alone so some of these will appeal to you and some of them won't simply because either the different artist or the different author just doesn't mesh with you but you're pretty much guaranteed to find at least one or two of in this series uh, if you're a big Batman fan, it's cool to see the different takes on Batman, and they're not all generic Batmans. They're, there's all different takes on him. Next we have God is Dead. Number one, Jonathan Hickman, probably the hottest writer around right now. Uh, this is starts off, natural disasters are taking place in uh, different points of the world. You learn that uh, as these events are taking place, millions of people are dying, but they're taking sp place at specific points where other gods have lived. The title, God is Dead, meaning the one god is no longer around. Guess what? All the uh, gods from the Aztecs, the uh, Zeus, uh, Zeus uh, uh, the, the Norway gods, uh, the you know, Odin, everybody. Yep. All the gods are back. 
and I guess they're a little bit pissed. Yeah, so, they're, they're coming back and they're asserting their dominance over the human race and kind of getting their own little territories exactly. set up again. This thing goes on where they're getting together. The one good thing is not everybody's influenced by the gods. There's the nerd population. Basically, it's up to the, uh, the, the little geeks, the nerds. The too. scientists who are hiding out underground and they're going to figure out a way to take the Earth back. Good read. I enjoyed it a lot. Artwork was great. So. Yeah, the artwork is fantastic in here. And Hickman, again, is a really good writer. Yeah, so, so uh, I, I, would, I would recommend this one. The next one is from Dark Horse Comics. This is The Star Wars. Not to be confused with Dark Horse Comics' run of Star Wars. The Star Wars is essentially the rough draft, the original draft of Star Wars that George Lucas originally submitted. And there is a lot to see in here for Star Wars fans. It's kind of a alternate reality in essence because for example in here this kind of some people might actually confuse this with a uh, Star Wars number seven because in here Luke Skywalker is already a Jedi uh, general. He is leading the resistance. Anakin Starkiller is the uh, kind of the new savior that's coming up. The Sith are there, but they're more out in the open. They're kind of more of a known entity. There's a lot of call-outs, so for example, one thing that I really liked is in one of the artworks is you see the city that these giant ships are flying in front of because of the view, and it's the giant triangle ships from the movies and everything. But then in another view, you realize that these are the star TIE fighter versions. There aren't TIE fighters, there are little triangle ships. And that's their TIE fighter, and you can see where that actually translated when George Lucas made Star Wars, how he used, he kept those ships, but he just made them the larger ones, and uh, how there's a lot of uh, overlap between Luke Skywalker and went in this, and then Anakin Skywalker, and then there's a whole bunch of little call-outs. So it's essentially, it's an alternate reality of what could have been. So it's an interesting read. The last one we have is from Marvel, and of course, people that have been following this series and love these characters, this is X-Men Battle of the Atom. Uh, of course, we had to throw this in here real quick. Essentially, uh, Beast brought the original X-Men into the present as a way of trying to head off the disasters that are coming. Um, of course, messing with time is never a good thing. So there's more time travel, you're going to see that the artwork is amazing by uh, the artist is Cho along with a few others that supported him and helped him. And Bendis, Michael Bendis, uh, really does create a good pacing and it's, it does surprisingly make a approachable comic issue uh, considering all the different, there are two Scott Summers, there are, one goes by Scott and one goes by Cyclops and you can see his original and then what he becomes and they're, they kind of actually butt heads, and there's a bunch of factions within the X-Men, as usual, about how things should be handled. Uh, really, this is more setting it up, getting people used to this universe, the idea that there are multiple timelines within our quote-unquote present timeline. And don't worry, there will be more. <laughs> so, but really, the standout of this issue, at least to me, was the artwork. Absolutely fantastic, full, full uh, dual-page images full just great use of the space so all right and now up next is our reviews for our first review we actually are going to kick off with dark horse comics station the station this is a multi-dimensional explosion kind of unleashes destruction and monsters uh it's kind of a cautionary tale of where what happens when scientists kind of meddle with timelines and it's a good idea going bad where they created a machine to look at different timelines to basically show politicians and everybody the errors of their ways, showing, look, you do this, you might cause World War III to start because you do this little thing and you think you're doing good, but it's not. Well, of course, the scientists themselves don't realize that they do something, and that unleashes basically destruction. Uh, a bunch of different timelines, debris really show up. There is some really cool ideas in here. A lot of potential where you see 
all this debris from all these potential timelines are kind of just strewn about, and that's really interesting. Unfortunately, it kind of gets wasted in the potential because the mini miniseries never really just finishes it. It really begs for a follow-up miniseries to tie up some of these loose ends and add some more depth to the world. The next issue we have is King Conan, Hour of the Dragon number 3. We saw an earlier review on this series and glad to say that this one actually inserts more character to Conan as a character. Uh, he actually has some strong moments uh, where he has transitioned from being the barbarian to the king and he shows his growth here a little bit. Unfortunately it doesn't really take too much advantage of this as much as it shows this uh, the storyline still is him fighting and getting his kingdom back. It does show that he ha has some consideration for his countrymen where he understands that they thought he was dead so he forgives them for moving on kind of. And the artwork is very good in broad strokes but there isn't the occasional odd face. The stories of this view Conan as a immutable brick, as a character whose interesting things happen to happen around but not to mm -hmm. so I do read this one on I read it every time it comes out I, I would agree with that a uh, hundred percent it's it is good though I love the He's artwork. A cookie cutter character he is uh, you know what you're getting from essential catalyst comic number three now this one's an interesting one mostly because it is a collection of little three three stories within one now two out of three ain't bad that's essentially what Leto did for our review, is he said, two out of three ain't bad. It's, uh, though it's meant to be the same time frame and maybe the same area, you can't really tell. It's kind of disjointed. Uh, it's never solidified whether everything is happening at the same place and time. It really needs, uh, you do need to know a little bit more extensive history of the Catalyst comics, and this isn't really a good starting point on this issue. Recommended, obviously, to go back to issue one and pick it up from there. There are some interesting ideas, but they get muddled and ultimately don't amount to much. So there really isn't much that gets done within this issue. Middle of the road. Yeah. This is out today, by the way. Another one that is out today is Baltimore, the Infernal Train, number one. This is an, uh, another BPRD Hellboy kind of world one that isn't directly tied in to those series. This gives him, uh, this gives a lot more freedom with the character. You don't have to tie them into all the other continuities. He is his own separate. So l the titular Lord Baltimore essentially is hunting down the vampire lord that killed and turned his wife. And in this series at least, the main antagonist is the church's inquisition. So in here the vampirism as a plague has gone across like the black plague and the inquisition sends out uh, priests to warrior monks essentially to fight the vampire plague. Unfortunately they also type, typecast anybody that has been in contact with these vampires and as having been tainted by them as well. Therefore it puts the warrior monk direct head against Lord Baltimore so they're bumping heads and that creates an interesting dynamic uh, really this issue sets up the series the comic and it really sets the good pacing for it so I'm interested to see where this goes uh, new readers might miss some of the details if they haven't read some of the other Baltimore uh, series but it gets enough through that you should be good to pick this up if you haven't read the other ones it really starts it off on a strong series. The pacing is really good. The story is very nice. The mythos is really solid. It sets it up well, and the artwork is good. So this is a good introduction to the series, even if you haven't been reading Lord Baltimore the entire time. And, of course, Lita wrote the full review. It's on FrontTowardsGamer.com, along with all these reviews can be found on the website. And see the full review, see what uh, Lito gave it, and see more detail than I can give in this video. As an added bonus, we actually, because of all the time and everything that's involved, 
we can't get to everything. So you may have noticed at the bottom of the screen throughout this video, we have included a ticker that goes through some of our Twitter reviews. Little 140 character reviews of issue comics throughout the week that you can find on at PNC, my Twitter handle. I'll be tweeting them out throughout the week as I finish these comics and give a little idea, a little summary. Now throughout this video we have been having these running at the bottom in case that you haven't seen them and it just gives you a little taste and lets you get a general idea of that review without doing a full review. If you like this idea let us know. We'll keep it up. We're always willing to change, keep it going. So let us know. That's our reviews for issue number 36 for September 4th, 2013 for Comic Station. Thank you very much for joining us. I am Paul Nisi from Fun Towards Gamer. And I'm Scott Cage at the Comic Station. And we will see you next week.